Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, just a couple logistics before we get started with our presentation. Um, there is a, a chat box, which you can either submit questions there uh, or preferred, there is the question and answer box or pop up. Uh, if you do have questions, please submit your questions there and we will take those at the end. Uh, in case we do not get to all the questions, we will be following up via email. Uh, so do expect that in case we do not get to your question. And at this time, I'd love to present our speaker, Michael. Michael, the floor is yours. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Can I start? Yes. So very briefly, a few words about RareSight. RareSight is an American company founded in 2009 and based in Seattle. And we are a precision biology company developing high performance microscopes dedicated to pathology type samples, all type of biopsies, including, including liquid and tissue biopsies. At RareSight, we focus on two main areas. First, the rare cell analysis and retrieval of the cells, it's mainly used for the circulating tumor cells, the CTC. And second, the fast growing field of spatial biology and its highly multiplex tissue analysis. Today, I will talk about the Orion, which is a really high speed, highly multiplex spatial analysis imaging platform. And if some of you are interested, contact us after the webinar and we, I will send you a few words about the SiteFinder 2 instrument here on the left, which includes beside the imaging part, an onboard device for the micro region retrieval to collect the cells of interest for downstream genomic analysis. So why did we develop the Orion system? As you know, tissue consists of heterogeneous cells type, each with diverse function and functional states arranged spatially in a way that it impacts the patient health status. And our main goal in spatial biology is to understand which cell types are present, where they are exactly localized in the tissue, but also determine the pattern of biomarker expression, ideally at the cellular level. The goal is also to understand how the cells organize and how they interact to influence the tissue microenvironment. So resolving this complexity is challenged by several things. It's challenged by the autofluorescence of the cells, and it's mainly challenged by the overlaps of the different fluorescent signals, which limit the number of targets that can be simultaneously evaluated. It's also challenged by the very low throughput, usually due to a very long multi-cycle staining procedure, and also by a very slow acquisition time. Last thing, it could also be challenging to determine where are localized the good regions of interest across the whole tissue section. So the Orion technology breaks these barriers, providing rapid, straightforward, highly multiplex whole slide tissue analysis. We have developed the Orion to bring together the most desirable features of an optimal tissue imaging platform compatible with pathology workflow. So Orion enables whole slide imaging of FFP and frozen tissue section on last slides. It enables rapid single round staining and imaging, simultaneous investigation of 15 markers or more, the imaging with subcellular resolution. Um, Orion has an autofluorescence redu reduction to assist detection of low expression proteins. It also has bright field imaging capability enabling some uh, same section uh, HNE staining. We offer flexible panel design with commercially available antibodies and labeling kit. And Orion has a compatibility with established image formats for the data and metadata. Uh, metadata, metadata. This slide shows the requirement for spatial biology that we just reviewed in the previous uh, slide as colon. And the key components of the Orion platform that work together to meet those requirements. While the instrument is important in all areas, we have also put significant effort into the fluors used for staining and the extraction process. And I will touch on all of these uh, items during this presentation. 
So from a high level, Orion has a very straightforward workflow. Essentially, you prepare your slides on traditional microscope slides, so normal tissue sections, and we are working mostly with FFP preparation. The staining is actually a single step staining process. There is no iterative cycles here. It's done with really standard immunofluorescence protocol with all the different biomarkers addressed at the same time. So the staining doesn't take very long uh, to be done with uh, our procedure. Then it takes only one scan for all the fluorescent channels. It takes about 75 minutes per square centimeter to perform the full scan of all the channels in only one single pass. So only a few hours to image the whole tissue, the whole tissue section uh, on the slide. And then the data can be analyzed on stream, either on the onboard qualitative software named Artemis or on the third party software. Here are the main specification of the instrument. With uh, this small footprint, it can be installed on a standard bench. You have the dimension here, it's about a cube of 55 centimeters. Channels are narrow and high in number, but typically we do 10 to 20 for best quantitative reproducibility. The scan is uh, very fast, it's about 75 minutes per square centimeter. It scans the whole slide and the system can hold uh, two slides at the time. The system employs uh, autofocus. It comes with four objectives that are listed here, 4X, 10X, 20X, and 40X. And we usually uh, use the 20X. It has uh, seven lasers from 405 to 730 nanometers. And it has a scientific uh, CMOS camera. The seven illumination lasers allows us to collect data across a broad wavelength range. These curves represent spectral scans of about 50 argofluoridized candidates. Uh, you can note the overlap. And while we could image all of these probes simultaneously, the amount of crosstalk would compromise data quality. So we choose a set of dyes that are spectrally spaced, and we tune the emission filters to capture the different peaks. The very narrow bandwidth of the emission filters limit the crosstalk, and therefore we are able to accurately measure and control the overlaps between the different fluorescent channels that we use here. Typically, we use 10 to 20 channels simultaneously for obtaining the best uh, results. The overlap is measured to generate a spectral matrix, which is used by the extraction process to isolate individual target images to separate channels in the output data. And keep in mind that this step of extraction is fully automated, so the user doesn't have to do uh, anything uh, at this step. To illustrate this, we can see here this uh, section of lung stain with five key biomarkers, cytokeratine, CD68, and three T cell markers. The five antibodies used here are di directly conjugated to five dyes, which are all from the same uh, region of the spectrum, the orange region, uh, so around 600 nanometer. And Orion is able to resolve all these signals so each individual biomarker can be visualized independently. And then the software will create for you a pseudo color composite with the signal spectrally and spatially result. This process is automatically performed. There is no intervention needed from, uh, from the user here. Keep in mind that here for this, this example, we have done this uh, for a single spectral region. But now with Orion and using uh, its seven lasers, you multiply this across the entire spectrum. And so you increase a lot your possibility for multiplexing. We have also optimized some panels. For example, our immuno-oncology 12-plex panel contain the typical immune response marker and also some specific checkpoint uh, marker. And our immuno-response 9-plex is here above, 
uh, is giving a more general immune response. Those two core panels offer some flexibility in order to include custom biomarkers of your choice, such as architectural markers, cancer-specific biomarker, but it could be also marker of the cellular cycle or specific uh, of a disease, for instance. Thanks to the possibility to customize its own biomarker panel with Orion, we can assess any kind of sample, lung, melanoma, tonsil, thymus, pretty much any kind of tissue that you can put on a slide will work with the Orion system, including tumor microarrays, the classic TMA, as you can see here uh, in the back of the, of the image. And we can do that because Orion uh, has the ability to scan the whole slide, and so um, it makes this uh, feasible. It's actually quite common to perform a serial section uh, for HNE staining, the hematoxylin and eosine staining, to look first for specific areas of concern and then look deeper with the immunofluorescent staining. With the Orion workflow, it's actually feasible to get the HNE imaging of the same section, so the same exact slide. What we do is we first stain uh, the sample for the multiplex fluorescence, do that imaging using the Orion system, remove the cover slip of the slide, and then we stain, uh, we stain it with uh, HNE and image it again using the bright field mode of the Orion system. So we can see for the same section, the HNE staining as well as the IPLEX fluorescent imaging. At this stage, I would like to show you some real data obtained from a colorectal carcinoma sample. And this is the biomarker panel used in the study to generate the image that we are going to review together today. It corresponds to our 12-plex immuno-oncology core panel plus five extra markers plus the nucleus dye and the autofluorescence channel. So I'm going now to open the Orion software named Artemis, and we will have a look at a full scan of a colorectal carcinoma uh, sample. Okay, so first of all, when you open the image in Artemis, you have the global view of the tissue, so it's fully on zoom. Just to give you the orientation of this image, on the far right, it's the bowel lumen. In the center, we will find the, the tumor. And on the left side, here, it's uh, the smooth muscle. On the far left, right here, it's some adipose tissue. Using the wheel of the mouse, you can easily zoom in and zoom out. And thanks to the pyramidal teeth format of the image, zooming in and zooming out is smooth. As you can already notice, the good resolution here allows us to really have a look at the phenotype at the single cell level. This image has been acquired with the 20X, which gives a resolution about 0.5 micron. And there is also a 40X objective on the Orion instrument. To help with the visualization and the understanding of these 17 biomarkers staining, it's easier to look at combinations of given biomarker. And for that, we have already grouped some channels and we created seven visualization group. We can see them here on the left. In each group, you can decide to make visible or not each of the marker by just clicking on the marker here. On this general, general view at the far right of the, of the image, we have the mucosal surface of the tumor. The tumor cells are labeled with two markers, the cytokeratin in blue and the icaderin in light blue. In the center of the image, 
we see that the tumor cells invade beneath the mucosa into the smooth muscle, which is labeled in pink using the marker SMA. SMA stands for smooth muscle actin. And thanks to the marker CD45 in yellow, we observe also a dense collection of immune cells at the base of the mucosa on the right, and also at the invasive margin of the tumor in the muscle wall. If we zoom now on this area of the section at the top, where the tumor has not developed, we observe a normal colonic epithelium. Let's switch off panel here. And let's zoom. We can see here in blue a lot of typical and uniform colonic glandular structures. They are called crypts and they are labeled in blue with cytokeratin and ecaderin. These crypts are encircled by myofibroblasts blast in the lamina propria between the crypts. We see these myofibroblasts thanks to the marker SMA here in pink around the crypts. SMA also marks the boundary of the mucosa, as we see here around the tissue. The lamina propria also contains capillaries and small lymphatic vessels, which are CD31 positive, so they appear here in green. Finally, there are also some scattered KI67 positive proliferating cells present inside the crypt. KI67 is displayed here in red, and it's a nuclear marker, and this is part of the normal regenerative process of the mucosa. We can see some proliferative cells here, here, here also. If we navigate now to the center of our tissue section in the tumor area, and if we use another channel group, I'm going to switch from this one to this one. We are going to zoom in this area here. We can see here in this area that the adenocarcinoma cells express uniformly ecaderin, which is the membrane cell-to-cell -cell adhesion glycoprotein, and it's displayed in light blue. The cytoplasmic cytokeratins in dark blue are prominent in the groups of cells that appear larger and have less uniform shape within the malignant glands, like we can see here. Also, In contrast to the normal crypt cells that we were looking just before, here in the tumor area, there is a large fraction of the tumor cells that are KI67 positive, so in red, meaning that the cells are in a proliferative uh, phase. And finally, there is a dense collection of activated immune cells CD45 RO positive, here in green, and it's prominent between the cancerous glands. A few of these cells are B cells, as they are CD20 positive, and they appear in pink. We stay on this area, but let's look at the different biomarker group to focus more on the T cell markers of the panel.
So now CD8 is in red, CD4 in green, the nuclear marker FOXP3 in pink, and pan CK stays in dark blue. Let's zoom a little bit more. As you can see, most of the cells, most of the cells in this dense collection are CD4 positive T helper cells, which can also be seen between the tumor cells. We can notice within the CD4 population some regulatory T cells, as they have the marker FOXP3 here in pink. Finally, there are also some CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells present here in, in red, but they are much fewer in number than the CD4 positive cells. Let's move now on the left part of this tissue section, as I would like to show you the invasive border of the tumor. So I have selected a group of markers to see at the same time the smooth muscle in pink, the T cells in green, and the tumor cells in blue. We see here very clearly the invasive border of the tumor on the left part. And if we zoom, instance, we are going to zoom right here. There are some clusters of malignant budding cells in blue that have broken off from the glandular structures and they have infiltrated further into the smooth muscle. These infiltrative cells are actually surrounded by the green uh, T cells as part of the host response to these invasive cells. In contrast with the other tumor regions, in the infiltrative border, we see that first, the fraction of the proliferative cells is much, much lower. We count less Ki67 positive cells that are in red. And second, the level of staining of Ikaderin in light blue here is reduced. And in parallel, the presence of the cytokeratins in dark blue is more pronounced. This, this last observation is uh, consistent with a down regulation of the Ikaderin in the invasive cells that is part of the epithelial mesenchymal uh, transition leading to a more aggressive tumor behavior. In the 17 marker panel used in this study, we also add markers of the immune checkpoint. So let's switch up group of markers to focus more on PDL1, PD1, and the macrophages marker. I have unzoom a little bit and at the bottom of the tissue I can see that this region seems to be rich in pink color here, which corresponds to the PDL1 marker. Let's zoom into it. Interstitial macrophages surrounding uh, the tumor cells in this region can be identified by two markers, CD68 in green and CD163 in red. The macrophages are an important source of the checkpoint PDL1 in tumors. PDL1 binds 
to PD-1 at the surface of the T cells to suppress the anti-tumor immune response. The marker PD-1 is here in light blue and PD-L1 in pink. And the co-localization of PD-L1 on macrophages expressing both the marker CD68 and CD163 can be seen prominently here on the, on the left of the image. And on the right, in this area, it seems that the CD68 positive macrophages in green are more prominent than the CD163 in red, and the number of PDL1 positive is also lower. Here we can really observe a different neighborhood of expression. In contrast, the PD1 positive cells, uh, which are in light blue, are present in both areas in left and right. We can see better if I just let PD1 here. I have removed PDL1 in pink, and so you can see the PD1 positive cells in light blue. Last thing that I would like to show you on that tissue for today, it's the benefit of using a channel dedicated to the autofluorescence. So one more time, I'm going to switch off channel group. I'm going to unzoom so we can see the full tissue section. Let's move, let's move, for example, uh, here in this area uh, at the center of the tissue section. So zoom in. The colon contains nerves that control the peristaltic contraction of the bowel. The extracellular matrix within the nerve fibers can be simply visualized and identified by using the autofluorescence channel of the Orion. So the autofluorescence becomes here an additional marker. As you can see, the blood vessels that supply the nerve are here identified by the endothelial marker CD31 and its display in red. Okay, one last time, let's zoom out to see the full tissue section. One last time, I can switch off visualization group from the autofluorescence to this first group. So we can see the same image that at the beginning, as I mentioned earlier, it is possible to switch uh, off and switch on the different channels as you wish. So I can show you that. I can switch this one and this one and this one, for instance, to keep only the nuclei and the CD45, for instance. I hope you have appreciated this little guided tour of this uh, image of a colorectal adenocarcinoma slide stain with a 17 biomarker panel. And we can now move back to um, the PowerPoint. If you're interested uh, to look at more images acquired with Orion, I would like to invite you to visit our website. So to explore the data, it's easy. Just go to rarsite.com interactive and click on the data set you wish to explore. Um, the, first, the first data set is, the, is this 17 uh, plex imaging uh, of the colorectal adenocarcinoma that we have just reviewed today uh, during this presentation. 
And the second is a 16 plex imaging of oral squamous cell carcinoma. The third one is a 17 plex imaging of a lung sample. And we have another one uh, coming very soon on tonsil lymphoid hyperplasia. Once you have uh, selected one of the data sets, you will then be able to look at the whole slide scan and to zoom into it as you wish and display the different colors corresponding to the 16 or 17 biomarkers. So all images are already annotated to help you to navigate into the whole tissue and identify some specific regions of uh, interest. Before concluding, a few words regarding the analysis of the files obtained with Orion. So we are providing the Artemis software to visualize the images acquired. And from Artemis, we can export pyramidal open source format files. And the analysis can be done on many software solutions already existing, such as QPath, Allo, VisioForm, but also some open source and free analysis solutions that have been developed by different research group. Orion can be easily integrated into an existing quantitative analysis pipeline without the need to modify the exported files. To finish, just to let you know, in parallel, we are currently working at our site to develop our own pipeline for the quantitative analysis of the data generated with Orion. And this uh, will likely be presented in a future webinar. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you all for your attention. And I hope you are now enthusiastic to join the world of uh, spatial biology using our Orion technology. And uh, we can move now to the Q&A session. Thank you, Michael. Uh, this does conclude the presentation. We will take questions. And a reminder, you can and submit questions in the question and answer box. You might find it on the bottom of your screen or there's three little dots with uh, the word more. It might be underneath there. Uh, Michael, first question that we do have. So in regards to Artemis, the Orion software, can we take snapshots of the image? From uh, Artemis? From Artemis. Uh, we can take a snapshot, we can uh, export uh, part of the of the file if uh, the people wants to, uh, the person wants to zoom into a specific area and only uh, export that uh, using the channels of uh, their choice, uh, using uh, the zoom of, of, of their choice, yes. Um, you, Artemis is, you... a, is the visualization uh, tools, but uh, you can export in a TIFF format, whatever you want. Yeah. Perfect. And can you explain just a little bit more uh, how to export? How is the export? Uh, the type of file that you export is a TIFF, uh, TIFF format. Uh, that can be open in many uh, typical software for imaging. Could be open, open in ImageJ, uh, FIJ, uh, but also uh, some more complex solution to, uh, to the quantity, quantitative analysis. Again, Artemis at this stage is a, is a visualization tools. So you can visualize the whole slide. You can visualize the, the different channels. And if you want to make a, a quantitative analysis uh, of the of the slide, you have to uh, ex export the the whole slide TIFF file and bring it into a, a third part software for now, at least. Wonderful. And another question: How does Orion mitigate multiplex autofluorescence? So. Uh, the question is uh, how we manage to, uh, to do this uh, type of acquisition. We are using uh, seven lasers. And, and as I mentioned during the, the presentation, we, uh, we are using a, a specific uh, type of uh, filters that we can uh, adjust in some position to collect only very narrow um, band of, of the spectrum. And so uh, by doing that, first, we, we decrease a lot the, the problems of the overlaps between the channels, but there are still 
a lot of overlaps that are happening uh, at, the, at the minute that you try to, uh, to look at uh, 15 or 20 markers together, there are some overlaps. But the, the good news is that uh, with the Orion, we have built a matrix that um, where we know exactly what are the compensation to apply between the different channels. Um, and so um, automatically when the image is uh, generated, the system knows which channel, uh, channels have been uh, acquired. And so it will apply those compensation to, to give you uh, each individual uh, channel for the different uh, biomarker. Um, that's, that's the way it works. That's great. And another question uh, about the antibodies. Are all antibodies incubated at once? So yes, all the antibodies are incubated at once. Um, the specificity of our approach is that we uh, all our antibodies are directly conjugated. So uh, there is no uh, need of uh, amplification with a third, uh, with a second or, or third uh, antibody to amplify the signal. So because we are using directly conjugated uh, antibody, uh, it allows us to, uh, to put everything at the same time to do only one staining step. And, and then uh, during the acquisition for the, the camera will uh, navigate into each uh, position of the slide and take uh, images in the different channels. So. Wonderful. And just one or two more. Uh, question about the size of section. Uh, is there a limit to the size of a tissue section? I would say the limit is the size of the slide. We, we are really able to, uh, to scan the whole slide. Uh, so uh, the, the limit will be the, the glass uh, to, to, put the, to put the tissue. Wonderful. And one more question here. Are fluorescence images and h &E images registered? Say it again. Are, fluorescent, are the fluorescent image and h and &E image registered? Uh, so the H and &E, uh, I'm not sure to understand, but uh, are, are they registered? Uh, like, do, do we have a, a connection between the H and &E, uh, image and the um, fluorescent image? If this is the question, at this stage, uh, no, there are two separated images. But we, I, I hope that, uh, that soon we are able to uh, to switch from H and &E to uh, to fluorescent as like if H and &E is a is a channel by itself. Right now in our software there are two separated images, but again there are two separated images of the same exact um, slide. So it's not a serial section; it's really the same. Uh, same piece of tissue, so uh, it is very easy to switch from one to uh, to the other one because you know the localization of uh, what you are looking at is exactly the same uh, on the screen and on the image. Wonderful. And actually, so one more quick one uh, question about: Are these images taken at a twenty x resolution? So uh, no, we can, uh, in our process, we actually uh, like to use the 4X to, uh, to have a, a very quick overview of the, of the tissue. Uh, that, that scan takes, uh, you know, a, a couple of minutes uh, to, to scan the, the old slide in 4X. Then there is a 10X. Uh, we have a preference for the 20X uh, for, the, for the scan because it gives, Uh, speed at the same time that then it gives a good resolution uh, it's about 0.5 micron so it's way enough to have a, a single cell resolution but for people that would like to have a subcellular resolution then there is a, a, a 40x also on the on the system um, but the majority of the users uh, are actually using the 20x right now uh, wonderful 
Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone online. Thank you for joining. And again, a reminder, if we weren't able to get to your question, we will be following up via email. So do expect that from uh, a sales uh, representative from our site. And thank you again for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.